Who doesn't like pi? The mathematical kind, that is. We're all familiar with it because we meet it early on in school. But there's a lot more to pi than meets the eye. It crops up in everything from the mathematics of circles to the most fundamental area of physics. Let's find out a bit more about it. Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. This in itself seems at first surprising. Why is the ratio always the same regardless of the size of the circle? The answer is that all circles, on a flat plane at least, are similar, a mathematical term meaning that they're all scaled versions of each other. The formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared, where r is the radius, also involves pi, as can be shown by cutting the circle into smaller and smaller pieces, then arranging the pieces to approximate a shape of which we can easily calculate the area. We expect pi to turn up whenever circles are involved because its geometric roots lie in this shape. But the great wonder of pi is its habit of materialising as if by magic even when there's no circle in sight. For instance, the series 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on, which equals 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16 etc, gets closer and closer to the value pi squared over 6, as we include more and more terms. Turn this fraction upside down and we get 6 over pi squared, which is equal to the probability that two numbers, providing they're big enough, are co-prime, in other words that they have no common factors other than 1. Pi, in fact, is intimately and somewhat mysteriously involved with how prime numbers, that is numbers that have no factors other than themselves and 1, are distributed. It somehow ends up in a formula featuring one of the most important objects in maths known as the Riemann zeta function. You can check out what this is in the video on the Riemann hypothesis elsewhere on this channel. Why should a number that in the first instance we meet as a basic property of circles suddenly re-emerge in connection with prime numbers? Pi also crops up in answer to a problem known as Buffon's needle, a question first posed in the 18th century by French naturalist Georges-Louis Leclerc, who later became Count Buffon. Suppose a floor is made from parallel strips of wood that are the same distance L apart. If a needle, also of length L, is dropped onto this floor, what's the probability that it will land so that it crosses one of the lines between the wooden strips? The answer turns out to be 2 over pi. Back in 1655, English clergyman and mathematician John Wallace, who introduced the symbol for infinity, found that 2 over 1 times 2 over 3 times 4 over 3 times 4 over 5 times 6 over 5 times 6 over 7 and so on converges on the value pi over 2. Fast forward to 2015 and two researchers at the University of Rochester, Carl Hagen and Tamar Freudman, were astonished to discover the very same formula emerge from calculations to do with the energy levels of a hydrogen atom. Hagen, a particle physicist, had been teaching a technique in quantum mechanics known as the variational approach to a class of students. It's a method that can be used to approximate the energy states of electrons in complicated systems such as molecules where exact solutions are impossible. Hagen thought it would be a good exercise for his students to apply the variational approach to the relatively simple case of a hydrogen atom for which the energy levels can be calculated exactly to see what errors were involved in using the approximation. When he looked at the problem himself he spotted a pattern almost right away. The error in using the variational approach was 15% for the lowest energy state of hydrogen, 10% for the next lowest state and kept on decreasing for each successive state. Hagen asked his colleague Freudman, a mathematician, to look at how the approximation trended for higher energy levels. The limit approached by the technique as the energy levels increased exactly matched the Wallace formula. Pi is no stranger to physicists. 
It's found in Coulomb's law of electric charge, Kepler's third law of planetary motion, and the field equations in Einstein's general theory of relativity, to name a few. Whenever circles, spheres, or periodic motion, which stems from circular motion, enter the picture, so too does pi. But it makes an unexpected entrance, even when there are no circles or sine waves to be seen, as in the case just mentioned, or Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Sometimes a connection with the circular origins of pi can eventually be figured out, but at other times there's no obvious link with the geometry of our school days. Pi is just an omnipresent fact in both the material and mathematical universe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.